Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. We had a really great time away as a family in Wales. Um, we stayed at a place called Anglesey, which is really close to this town. And I have been practicing the pronunciation of this town for many, many hours. <laughs> Are you ready? <clears throat> As long as you're not Welsh, I'm sure that sounded pretty good, right? Although not quite as good as Mark's impression. Right, one more time, where are we leaving? Go, 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 go. As you may know, if you watch my Instagram stories, uh, we do a lot of days out with our boys. Getting out and about and having that level of variety in our lives is something I think that we all benefit from. Now, I know that autistic children can find change and days out distressing. We thankfully don't see too much need for sameness in Dexter. He is pretty flexible. Um, but also because we've done this from him being very small, it's, it's sort of like his normal. That being said, it's definitely not always easy taking Dexter out and about. You know, in the past we've gone out as a family and Dexter has just seemed either completely disinterested or unhappy. And I know what it feels like when everywhere you look, you see children having a really great time, engaging with their parents and their surroundings. And I get how disheartening that can feel. So I wanted to show you a few things that we did on our trip to Wales and that we tend to do on days out um, to help everyone, including Dexter, enjoy their time there. So first off, we pick places to go that we think Dexter will enjoy as well. With setup on your typical son, he'll pretty much enjoy anywhere that we go. But Dexter is a, a bit more focused on certain types of activities. Um, as far as I'm concerned, if one of my kids is going to have a crap time, then there is no point us going as a family. So one of the places we went to in Wales, and I'll post the names of these places in the description below if anybody is interested. This particular place has a huge miniature railway set up, as well as a big train that you can have a ride on. Pretty much Dexter's dream day out. <laughs> Luckily he said what his trains do. But yeah, we always consider what Dexter will enjoy when we choose places to go. Daddy, come on, come on, come on. we do is we go at a slower uh, slower pace with plenty of breaks throughout the day we we stop for snacks I mean Seb loves a snack snack break <laughs> it's really nice it's really nice we stop for lots of cuddles we stop to stim on visually interesting things um, and sometimes throughout the day Dexter might seem a bit agitated now because we have limited communication even with his device we don't always know why he is agitated or unhappy or what's bothering him. And I've learned over time that the best thing to do is actually not to hurl lots of questions at him. What's wrong, Dexter? What do you want, Dexter? What can I get you, Dexter? Um, but actually just to pause for a moment. I, it, generally, if we allow him to regroup after a little while, he's, he's good to move on. Kind of linked to that previous point, we also allow more time on Dexter's preferred activities before we try to get him to move on. We know that he's going to get more fixed on certain activities than other kids will, so we just plan for that. And again, we just take things at a slower pace. I feel like quite often as adults, we are in a, like a big rush to get from A to B to C, <laughs> when really we, a lot of the time we do have time to slow down a bit. We also try to avoid places or times of day that will mean a lot of waiting. Dexter is, as he gets older, getting way, way better at queuing for things. But if there is something he's really excited about, waiting is nigh on impossible and will likely result in a meltdown. In that sense, the limited numbers in places now due to the COVID restrictions is actually working really well for us. 
I think we all know as parents of autistic children what it's like trying to transition a child from a high interest activity. So we always try and have another high interest activity to move him onto. Now it doesn't always work perfectly and we did have a bit of a moment leaving the, the big train because we were only permitted one ride on it. We worked through it. Um, Warnings and countdowns sometimes work now too, um, visual countdowns, things like that, but they really didn't work when he was younger. Um, so in that sense, sometimes it's just an age thing. I think quite often parents of very young children are given advice like using visual timetables and now and next and, and all of these things and it really, parents are saying, you know, it's not working, they don't understand what I'm saying, they're not focusing on it. Um, it, your child is probably just too young. It's, it's nothing that you're doing wrong. I would say just leave it until they're older. I used to be that parent that was like, stop giving me the same advice, it doesn't work. But as he's got older, we notice things are starting to work. So keep trying, don't, don't give up on these, these little tactics and just um, do what works for your child. We do spend time introducing Dexter to things he's not that bothered about, just to, give him the opportunity to experience new things and maybe find new interests. So for example, we showed him the animals, which he's not really that bothered about, and encouraged him to feed them. We talked about them, but we'd never force him. This is supposed to be a fun day out for him, not an exercise intolerance or compliance. What nice ears, isn't he? Got Sleeping bunny? His eyes, yeah. It's his bone, isn't it? And that's his bone. And where's his ears? Bunny. Bunny, yeah. Where possible, we also incorporate his natural interests into activities that might otherwise be a bit less interesting. So, quick example of this there was a woodland walk. Um, and in the path there was like giant footprints carved out so we made a game out of counting them all out and he loves numbers and it caught his attention much more than if we'd i don't know like stomped through pretending to be giants or whatever games you would play with a typical child we also try to go to places where he can engage in physical activity not only does this help him to self-regulate uh, and get keep his emotions in check, but it's also something that he just really enjoys. So I wouldn't, t for example, book him into a family cooking session or take him to an arts and craft shop to paint a teapot or whatever. It's just, it would not hold his attention. He would probably not do what was expected of him and it would just likely end in tears for us all. And why, why would I put us through that? I wouldn't, you know, it's, it's supposed to be fun. <laughs> Another thing we try to do on days out is try to give him as much independence as we can whilst keeping him safe. Well, Mark does. <laughs> it's definitely something I find hard. I am a total helicopter mom, especially with Dexter. But, you know, as long as he's safe, I am trying my best to be more hands off. Any other helicopter parents out there? Is it just me? <laughs> we do not set expectations for the day not in terms of how long we expect to spend there or what we expect to do when we're there or what we think the kids are going to enjoy and this one is so important for parents of, of neurodivergent children it's it's really important that we don't do this all we can hope for is that both of our kids enjoyed some of the day and didn't absolutely hate any of it so if we paid i don't know 40 pounds to get into a family adventure park and we only spent like an hour entirely on one playground but the kids in that one hour were full of smiles well in my eyes that's still a success we still got out we still made memories together and um, it's important to look at the positives because that is better than spending six hours dragging miserable children around every attraction in there just because you paid the money to be there uh, the other thing I always bear in mind is that Dexter's brain does not filter out his information about his surroundings like um, 
a typical child's brain. It's why he has such an eye for detail as well, and it's why he has an amazing memory. But that also means that in a new, busy, exciting place full of full of things to do and see, that there's a lot of sensory information for him to process. Now, while that might not cause distress in all children, it doesn't particularly cause distress in Dexter, it does make it harder for him to engage with me and to process what I'm saying. Uh, and once I understood that, it meant that I had learned not to take it personally or panic, you know, that we were losing skills or get sad that he was ignoring me on a day out. At home, in a quiet, undistracted environment, he is much more able to listen and engage so I just, I can't expect that same level of engagement from him when we're out, and I, and I don't now. In that sense, I am managing my own expectations of the day, and it makes me have a happier time. So that is how we try to have a happy family day out with our little autistic, beautiful little boy. <laughs> um, I will leave you with some highlights of our little Welsh mini break. I hope you enjoy! Thank you, Robin, yeah, no tickets. No tickets. No happy meals. <laughs> no I shut the windows. You shut the windows? Yeah. All the happy meals have gone. Eat all the time. Yeah.